Chef Express cards aren't cheap. Few offer the large storage capacity needed for 4K and 8K projects. The Ninja 5 external recorder is a great option for studio work, but not ideal for fun and gun work or for traveling. Has Angelbird hit a home run with their 2TB and 4TB CF Express cards? Do they provide a cost-effective solution for both professionals and enthusiasts? I'll answer these questions and more. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker. If you're new here, subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, or tutorials. And by the way, I'm also giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full-frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Details are in the description down below, or you can watch this video here. But essentially, all you have to do to have a chance of winning is simply subscribe. Most reviews start off with gratuitous shots of the product to show you what it looks like up close. But I'm a little strange. I like to dig into the company's vision and goals to understand why they do, what they do, and where they're going. Only then do I tear open the box and begin my evaluation. Angelbird's vision and creed stood out from other companies I looked at. They sound like a young company born to break the rules, focus on improving the customer experience and delivering innovative products. A responsible James Dean sort of company. There's no no, we love doing what others don't dare to, breaking and bending technical boundaries to make your tools even faster, more capable and versatile. They're not trying to keep up with the competition, merely happy making lower priced copies of the market leader or ensuring that the quality is good enough not to get too many bad reviews. They're striving to lead the competition, where others spend a lot of time analyzing market potential, testing consumer acceptance, or shelf impacts, we get busy creating the products you want. That might seem risky, but it's more fun to innovate with freedom. And the results speak for themselves. Having the freedom to innovate is certainly an incubator for success. And I think the results are paying off for us as end consumers, and they're about to release a 4 terabyte card. While not as fast as other CF Express cards on the market, the extra storage gives us the freedom to be mobile and produce content, eliminating that record anxiety. I've worked in my share of startups before the dot-com bubble, going back some 20 years ago, and I learned a lot. At one point, I built a web-based CRM system and bug tracking system using Perl, simply because we needed it and couldn't afford to purchase anything. I'd never written anything significant or even written to a database before. The application that I ended up creating had some 14,000 lines of code. I had many late nights, but it was worth it. The rewards of working in that environment were addictive. It pulled me in. I worked long hours and a great sense of satisfaction at delivering results that I never thought myself capable of. I know what you're thinking. Simon, what's this got to do with the review? Well, it's about innovation and the agility traits of successful companies that deliver better customer experience, not held back by process or the movement of paper from one department to another. But how well do their cards perform? Do they measure up? I've been using the ProGrade 325 gigabyte Cobalt CF Express cards since I got my R5 back in July. And there's no doubt, they certainly are the Ferrari of the CF Express world and have a price to match. They're super fast, but in order to compare the ProGrade Cobalt 325 gigabyte card to the Angelbird 2 terabyte card, we need to see how fast they really are. I don't take the speeds stamped onto the face of these cards literally. Now, ProGrade says that their cards can deliver a minimum write speed of 1400 megabytes per second from the camera to the card and 1700 megabytes read. The Blackmagic performance test shows that we're getting speeds up to 1060 megabytes per second and reads up to about 1530 megabytes per second. Certainly fast enough for my workflow and most likely yours. And this is pretty common with storage cards, both SD and CF Express cards, which is why I like to test them to see what I can expect sustained over the entire card. Can they handle 12K video or even 8K raw video? Can the content move off the cards quickly enough? The only results that really matter are how well, are how well the storage cards help us reach those objectives, not if they fall short of their stated specs. The lesson here, if you need 28 megabytes per second, don't get a card that advertises 30 megabytes per second. I ran the same benchmark test on the Angelbird 2TB CF Express card. As you can see here, the 2TB card tops out at about 850 megabytes per second when writing data, and about 600 megabytes per second when reading data. I use F3Write to validate these results. 
F3 is an open source piece of software, and I use it to check every card for performance. But I also use it to detect if the cards that I'm purchasing are actually fake cards. I highly recommend you testing every card you purchase before putting it out in the field. The last thing you want to do is learn the hard way that you've purchased a fake, because looking at these cards, you really can't tell the difference. Now, F3 is for Mac. For Windows, I recommend using H2 Test. It is also open source. I use F3 Write because it writes to every single cell, reporting the write speed every few seconds. F3 not only tests the write speed of the entire card, it does the same for the read speed. Now, F3 Write got an average of 866 megabytes per second. This is slightly less than the advertised speed of 1000 megabytes per second. I'll cover the read test later. Next, I wanted to see how well the Angelbird 2TB card performs when recording 8K RAW video. This is the toughest real-world test I can give the card using my R5. My goal is to be able to record until the card fills up without the camera stopping due to performance issues. Does the read speed matter to you? Do you want to get your files off the card quickly? Well, it does matter to me. For the read test, I'll be using the iMac Pro. The ProGrade card is connected to the Mac using the ProGrade Thunderbolt 3 card reader. The Angelbird card is connected using the USB-C card reader. But before testing, I want to address how storage is measured. Every time I review storage, I get comments saying that I did it wrong, that cards are measured in bits, not bytes. As a general rule, data at rest is measured in bytes, and that's megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, but the B is written as an uppercase B or capital B. But data in transmission is measured in bits, megabits and gigabits, and the B is a lowercase b. Now this is an important distinction because every byte contains 8 bits. Now this doesn't mean that you can't refer to data in transmission in bytes. I mean, after all, these are measurements, and you could go ahead and use miles and kilometers interchangeably, right? Things only get confusing if you write down 50 kilometers when you actually meant miles. So pay very careful attention to what the card uses and the uppercase or the lowercase b. Now with that out of the way, let's take a look at what data rates are needed for each video mode. The Canon R5 has a data rate of 470 megabits per second in 4K HQ. This mode captures the full sensor in 8K and down samples in camera to 4K, providing you with much better detail. But if you want better dynamic range, turn on C-Log, but the data rate jumps up to 940 megabits per second. Want to shoot at 120 frames per second in 4K? That's 1880 megabits per second. But the heaviest demand on the card comes from 8K RAW. It requires a staggering 2600 megabits per second. That's 18 gigabytes per minute. Prefer to see the speed in bytes? No problem. Now let's bring in the benchmark results we got earlier. If we use the very conservative test results from F3 Write, we can see that the Angelbird 2TB CIF Express card can easily handle not just 8K RAW and 30 frames per second, but should have no problems with 12K RAW with a ratio of 5 to 1. I choose Blackmagic's Ursula Mini Pro 12K's least compressed 12K video mode. But how much slower is the Angelbird 2TB CF Express card compared to the ProGrade 325GB card? Blackmagic showed that ProGrade can deliver 1530 megabytes per second read speed, while the Angelbird tops out at 600 megabytes per second read. Good enough, right? No, not at all. We need to do a real world test. Mythbusters Adam Savage wouldn't start with charting things out on a piece of paper, would he? No, they'd test the thing until it blows up. I placed the R5 outside in a well-ventilated area, in the shade, and the ambient temperature was 57 degrees Fahrenheit, so I didn't have to worry about overheating. Now, while the R5 stopped recording twice, it was due to that pesky record limit of 30 minutes. I ended up getting an hour and seven minutes before the battery died, and not once did I have any issue with the card. While having a slower write speed than the ProGrade Cobalt, it has no impact on recording 8K. Now let's see how well the two cards perform in real-world reading. I copy this 221GB 8K video file to both CF Express cards to prepare for this test. Now I'll copy the file from each card separately to the iMac Pro. Now some will point out that this is both a read and a write test, but the bottleneck we're testing is how fast the cards can read the data stored on the cards not how fast the iMac can record and write data. Let's start with the Angelbird 2TB CF Express card. Through the magic of video editing, I've sped things up. It took 5 minutes and 4 seconds to copy the file from the Angelbird 2TB CF Express card to the Mac. 
Now let's see how fast the ProGrade Cobalt 325GB card performs the same task. Same 8K file, a definite improvement, 2 minutes and 11 seconds. That's consistent with the benchmark results we saw from Blackmagic earlier. I know what you're thinking. Simon, the Thunderbolt 3 port is faster than USB-C, and yes it is. I repeated the test, switching the card readers, and there was no statistically significant variation. Let's recap. The Angelbird can write at least compressed 12K RAW video from the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 12K, 8K RAW from the R5, all this sustained without issue. It has a colossal 2 terabytes of storage, a slower read speed, but where does it compare on price? We designed and manufacture right where we are in Dornburn, Austria. Ever heard of it? Well, I honestly didn't before doing this review. I had no idea that Angelbird is a small company that designs, builds, and develops their products in Austria. And the place looks absolutely beautiful. It's got a rolling landscape, the mountains in the background are not far from a beautiful lake, and a healthy squirrel population. With the leaves changing, the view must be breathtaking this time of year. But Austria must also be a great place to manufacture goods too because the cost per gigabyte is less than the competition. 45 cents per gigabyte. The price drops to 35 cents a gigabyte if you buy a four pack. Their closest competitor is the Delkin 2 terabyte card and it costs $100 more than the Angelbird. The ProGrade Cobalt 325 gigabyte card costs $1.80 per gigabyte. That's almost four times the price and that's the cost of having those fast read and write speeds. You can have high performance or you can choose to have fast storage. You can't have both. The question is, which card works best for your workflow? I see essentially three outcomes. The ability to write up to 12K raw video for sustained periods of time. Two, the ability to record vast amounts of data without worrying about filling up the card. And three, the ability to get your content off the card and ready for editing without hindering your workflow. The Angelbird 2TB card can write the least compressed 12K RAW video option from the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 12K sustained without any issues. It has a colossal 2TB of storage, giving us the ability to record vast amounts of 4K video without worrying about filling up the card. And you can get the content off the card in a reasonable time, and it has the lowest price per gigabyte in its class. But let's address the read speed further. One capability could greatly impact your workflow and involves many variables. Do you convert your video to Apple ProRes? If so, the bottleneck for you will be the time to convert the files to Apple ProRes. Now, my weekly Q&A video takes about 5 or 10 minutes to transfer to my iMac. And while that's happening, I'm working on other things like title and description, thumbnails, cleaning up the set. It's not a big issue. But if you need to convert files like that Q&A to Apple ProRes 422 or another format, it takes a considerable amount of time and a fast computer. But your scenarios might be different. If you do record a lot of video and need a video format like ProRes 422, get yourself an external recorder like the Ninja 5. It records Apple ProRes 422, Apple ProRes RAW, and several other video formats. You can even edit the files right off the SSD. This completely eliminates any of that transfer time and the need to convert those files to Apple ProRes. And this really is the best approach for this scenario. But every solution also has its drawbacks. The Ninja adds weight, it's more complex, more costly, and more things to check before filming. It's not going to eliminate your need for CF Express cards. The Ninja won't work in every situation. Do you want to travel a lot? Do you like doing fun and gun work? You're not going to be happy with traveling with another case to lug around. Keeping it light and simple is what matters to me, as well as being able to record when needed for as long as needed. It's also great if you don't have time constraints or need to get content edited and published in a hurry. And that's where the Angelbird 2TB CIF Express card really comes in. At 45 cents per gigabyte, 35 cents if you buy in bulk, it's affordable, reduces complexity, and removes that dreaded range anxiety. I love that I no longer have to format the card after every use to make room for the next project. I can keep the content on the card longer easily producing a week's worth of content before formatting the card, reducing the risk that I'll format something I'm going to need later. Understanding the capabilities that you need will help you get the best product. I shoot 4K HQ most of the time. Waiting 10 minutes or so to offload the content is no biggie. I don't convert the files to ProReds most of the projects that I work on, so I don't have that huge delay. The ProGrade is still a terrific card, has great performance, but in hindsight, 
I wish I'd gotten the Angelbird 2 terabyte card instead, or at least their 1 terabyte back in July. It's better suited for the work that I do. But as my channel grows, I can see myself using more Angel, Angelbird terabyte, 2 terabyte cards, or even the 4 terabyte card, for traveling and fun and gun work, and using a Ninja for long video shoots like interviews or Q&A videos, eliminating that transfer and transcoding time. What about you? Does the Angelbird 2 terabyte card fit your workflow? Let me know in the comments section down below. But that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win a Cinco Lav S6e and M3 microphones. I'll be awarding this prize once the channel reaches 20,000 subscribers. And I'll be offering up a more expensive and different prize every 10,000 subscribers until we reach 100,000. At which point, I'll be offering up or awarding, I should say that, I'll be awarding the Canon EOS R5, a brand new full frame mirrorless camera to one lucky subscriber. But on that bombshell, it's time to go. Thanks for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.